God, today is your day, and we're here to celebrate with you and give you thanks and love and honor because of the joy and the hope and the mercy and the love that you've given to us. Father, we ask that as we continue through this worship service that it would be pleasing and holy to you. Lord, we ask that you take these distractions away from us that we may have walked in with. Maybe it's the distraction of, of actual Christmas buying gifts. We just ask that you take those things away from us and help us to focus completely and wholly on you and the greatest gift that you've ever given us, your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for today. We pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Let me make you aware of a couple of things. Tomorrow night, Christmas Eve at 5.30, we will have a candlelight communion service in here tomorrow night at 5.30. Love to have you and your family be here. If you've got family coming into town, everybody's welcome. Uh, we'll try to keep it as um, holy but yet brief as possible, knowing that you have kids and you have a lot of things going on. But we want to stop and pause and give God thanks tomorrow evening at 5 30. So we'd love to have you be here and be a part of that if you can. Notice uh, our body moon Christmas offering here uh, that we take up through the month of January. This goes to help support our international missions. I think uh, I think I saw we were at about 3,000 and something, and then I think we had about 1,000 given this morning. So um, we'd like to reach a goal of about 10,000. So pray about how you can be a part and involved in that particular mission. Awesome. Again, we are delighted you are here with us. Let's stand as we sing together.
Today, we light the candle of love. Love. God's love. You'll notice that there are two more candles. Candle of love, which we light today. Now there's one more candle. The Christ candle, which is in the middle, which will be lit tomorrow on Christmas Eve. As Christ, we celebrate Christ's coming to earth. But today we focus on love. How much God loves us. And I really want you to think this morning. What is God's love all about? I'm going to ask you in the sermon, more than likely, if you had to describe God's love to somebody, how would you describe it? So in the next few moments, as we continue to sing, as we continue to worship, think about God's love. In 1 John, we're told that God is love. What does God's love mean to you this morning? Now, as we continue to worship this morning, we're going to stand and we're going to sing, Now We Sing of Christmas, hymn number 111. Let's stand as we sing together. Good morning. How are y'all? Everybody awake yet? Yeah? No? Saying you're not awake yet? That's a cool time. I like that. Alright, so this morning, well actually last night, um, while I got to hang out with the baby, Elizabeth um, finally started wrapping presents two days before Christmas, right? And so we, she got the presents all wrapped up and finished and put under the tree, and it reminded me of when I was a child. And how we would have presents sitting out under the tree for a couple weeks and you're always like sitting there like wondering what's inside, right? And you're excited to open them on Christmas morning. And so I can remember just running out of my room early in the morning and just digging in, right? To find out what presents I got. So I got to thinking about it. Um, when you're running inside, or when you're running at the tree on Christmas morning, because in a couple days you're going to be able to do the same, right? You guys have had probably had Christmas presents under the tree for, for a couple weeks now. Um, if your parents are on top of things, not in our family, we're just sort of last minute people. So, uh, But if you've probably seen those presents, you're excited about opening them, you're ready for Christmas morning so you can go in and just open presents, right? Yeah, absolutely. But when you go do that, which present do you pick first? You pick the biggest present, the smallest present, the one with like the most pretty wrapping on it, most pretty on it. No, I'm talking about like real presents, like like this. 
Would you go and open this present first? Let's say that this has your name on it, Levi. Let's say that this is Levi's present. Are you going to open this present first? Or are you going to open the big, pretty present first? Probably the big, pretty present, right? That's the one I'm going to have every time. But why wouldn't you choose this one? Because it's small. It's in a brown bag. There's nothing special about it, right? Yeah. Um, but what if, I, what if I gave you this gift and it's all that I had? It's, this is everything that I had and I wanted to give this to you. Would that make it more special? Yeah, probably a little bit, right? Well, in the same way, um, and, and John, you know this scripture, John 3, 16, it says, For God loved the, the world so much that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not pray or perish, but they have eternal life. And so God gave us the greatest gift of all in Jesus. And Jesus came to be born for us, right? But He wasn't born, where was He born? We talked about it. Yeah, in Bethlehem, in a manger, which is a barn. So Jesus came, he was born in a barn. He was born of parents who Joseph was a carpenter, so they didn't have a lot of money. And so, really, the people were looking for a king. They were looking for that, that flashy, good-looking, big present. But what they got was Jesus, like the brown paper bag present, who was born in a barn. Nothing special. He was born in a feeding trough. Right? In the manger. We talked about that the other night. And so, think about that as you begin to open presents on Christmas morning. Maybe don't go after this the biggest present or the most shiny present. Because there may be something better in a smaller brown paper bag. But God loved you so much that He gave you the greatest gift of all. And it wasn't flashy and it wasn't pretty. But He loved you so much that He gave you, he gave you everything that He had in Jesus, His Son. Let's pray together. God, we love you so much. We're so grateful uh, for who you are. God, we thank you for giving us the greatest gift of all in Jesus, your son. God, you gave us everything so that we could spend eternity with you. We love you and it's in your name. Amen. Amen. While the children are getting their candy canes, if you would stand and join me in another hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory, number 94. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you've poured out on us, especially the blessing of your Son, Jesus Christ. What little can we do to give back to you a portion of which you've given us? Forgive us when we fail, Lord. Help us be generous as we well. Help us to love others as you love us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So that they could focus on, well, the main view. Jesus. I can remember stories being told of, you know, getting oranges. And that was the gift. But what a blessing it was to get an orange for Christmas. I can remember my dad telling stories of back in the day. They didn't put up a Christmas tree until Christmas Eve. Matter of fact, there wasn't a Christmas tree up when they went to bed. So when my dad and his sister went to bed, that's when the Christmas tree went up. He talks of trying to look and see and peek even underneath the door 
He also talks about how they blew pepper underneath that to put him back in his bed to make him sneeze. Christmas Eve. How things have gotten way out of kilter. Love. So, allow me, if you will, because I think all you need is love. Because I can't help but fall in love. I just need somebody to love. Because of this crazy little thing called love. You know, when a man loves a woman, sometimes they build that little love shack. But then sometimes go bad. That's when you give love a bad name. And it's called crazy love. Because it's a whole lot of love. And it eventually becomes love is a battle. Now all I did was use just a bunch of titles and songs to talk about love. From a bunch of different artists. You go all the way back, all you need is love. The Beatles, Can't Help Falling in Love, Elvis Presley, Somebody to Love, Queen, Crazy Little Love, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, Queen, When a Man Loves a Woman, Percy Sledge, Love Shack, the B-52s. You give love a bad name, Bon Jovi. Crazy Love, Van Morrison. Love is a Battlefield, Pat Benatar. Yes. Huh? Who is it? Jordan Sparks. Yeah, no. I hate to tell y'all. It was written long before she ever came around. Matter of fact, before she was born. <laughs> That's awesome. But... I think that helps illustrate what I'm talking about because I think love and the idea of love and how things have changed so much over the years, we don't really realize what love is or what it's about. If you've got your Bible, turn to the Gospel of John. We're going to look at the Gospel of John beginning with verse 1. Now I know it's Christmas and I should be reading from Luke and I should probably be reading from Matthew but I'm going to read from John because I think that's a great place to start. John 1, 1. Follow along, I'm going to read from the NIV. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. Now they're talking about John the Baptist. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, 
nor of human decision, or of humans, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and lived for a while among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning Him. He cries out saying, This was He of whom I said, He who, has, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of grace, we have received one blessing after another. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy scripture this morning. It depends on what translation you read. Verse 16 says, We have received grace after grace. This says, We have received one blessing after another. But it depends on the translation. And if you go back and look at the Greek, it's, it's grace, um, anti-grace, uh, and, and which means grace with grace, grace above grace, grace with grace, grace on top of grace because of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Grace on grace. And I really had to process that for just a moment. And as I think about love and I think about what God has done for us and Let's just pause for a moment or two and think about love. Because that's why God sent His Son. God sent His Son because He loved you, Molly. He loved you, Malia. He loved you, Ron. He loved you, Ben. He loved you. He loved me. That's why He sent His Son. He loved you. Now, I also want you to understand a thought process that would go behind this. If you read John 1.1 1, 1 and follow, in the beginning was the Word. The Word there is Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus. Let me finish reading it that way. And Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. Jesus was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life. Jesus was there in the beginning. I truly and fully believe that, 100%. Jesus was there when God created the world. And matter of fact, if you go back to Genesis 126, 127, it says... Let us create man in our image and in our likeness. Our plural. Wow. So, here's what I want you to process for a moment. And, um, Bonnie, you really started me thinking, uh, I guess it might have been Wednesday or I'm not really sure when it was. Bonnie prayed uh, one time when we were together and um, her prayer was Jesus thank you for leaving paradise to come here to us. Jesus left paradise. Jesus left completeness. Jesus left the perfect everything to come down here to be born as a baby in a stable, probably one of the lowest places you could possibly imagine, because he loved you. And I, 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 I don't have the answer to this, but I just want to pose a question. Did he have a choice? Did God look at his son and say, hey, would you go? I don't know whether he did or not, but I'm just going to assume he did. And I'm also going to assume that being crucified, he could have called the angels, we know that, to come down and rescue him. But he did not because he loved you and loved me. Otherwise, he would not conquer hell nor death. But he conquered hell and death as he died on the cross for you. He came in a manger knowing that the cross was before him. He knew that. 
start the suit, and he could have probably said, no. But instead, he said, no, I love you. I love you. Uh, let me ask a couple of questions. As I started thinking about love, and some of you down front, you may relate to some of these things. Some of you out there may relate to some of these things. Oh, I love my dog. I didn't say daughter, I said dog. Dog. I love my daughter too, but I, I said dog. I love my dog. Oh, I just love my car. That new movie came out, I just went and said, I loved it. That was awesome. My friend gave me this fuzzy, cuddly blanket, and I just love it. It's awesome. That new video game that came out, man, I love it. It's awesome. I just got a new phone, and I'm telling you, I love it. I got a boyfriend or girlfriend. I just love him. And all this bunch down here, they hang out with their girlfriends and their boyfriends and, and, and all, their, all their friends. That, oh, I just love her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost the idea of what some love really is. God's love. The love that came from paradise for you and for me. We so cheapened the idea of love that we don't understand what love is and what grace that comes with it. As I was reading this, in, um, the one sixteen, when it talks about John one sixteen, we talks about grace upon grace, and I really tried. And I tried to research that and I tried to understand it the best I could. And the best understanding that I could come of was one commentator described it this way. He said, imagine sitting at the ocean and the waves come. One comes and the next one comes and the next one comes and the next one comes. They keep coming. That's the idea of grace that God gives to us. That's how much He loves us. It's that grace that keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming. Only because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, He extended us that grace. And it's that love and it's that forgiveness that we have through Him. If you had to describe God's love to somebody, how would you do it? I just want you to think. Just to think. How would you describe God's love to someone? It's not the easiest thing to answer. Now, obviously, if you want to give the Sunday school answer, Jesus! But somebody who's really desiring to understand what God's love is all about, how do you describe it? That Jesus, who was there when the world was created, left his seat beside his father, came down, walked where we walk, lived as we live, and died to conquer death and hell. I didn't fully understand, I still don't fully understand, I'll be honest, but I didn't fully understand what it means to, I can only imagine what, what God went through when He let His Son come to earth. Now Jesus came and became sin. I don't, I don't know if, I mean, He didn't sin, but He became sin so that He conquered 
That's really a confusing kind of thought. Okay? But, many of you have been in this situation I'm getting ready to tell you about. In one form or another. Last August. Last August. We pack up Drew and we send him off to school. Now, many of you packed up your own children, sent them off to school. Many of you packed up your own children and done, you know, sent them to camp or done whatever. And here's here's the thing. It's not that I didn't trust him. It's not that I didn't want him to experience life at college. But there was a part of me that left. And here's the thing. You just kind of have to know Drew and maybe some of the rest of your, your children too, but I call him. He doesn't answer. <laughs> if he feels like it, he'll call me back when he's ready. But if not, I might get a call back and I might not. Now, if I rotate that over to a spiritual thought process, God wants us to call Him. God wants us to call on His name. But yet we pull a truth. Well, maybe if I get time, I will. Maybe I will. Now we can all laugh, and I'm using Drew as an example, but you know, the thing is, we're all guilty. And here's my faith. Of course, I haven't graduated to all these other new final things, but I still call and text. Okay, I will text, and then there's all this other stuff that they do. Okay. I'll text them. I will get a response sometime, usually within a 24 hour period. <laughs> but it's usually a one word. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to know. No. Class. You know, I just want to talk to you, son. That's all. And I don't think, as a young man, he understands what I'm going through as a dad. So what I want you to do is rotate that over to your relationship with God. All He wants to do is talk to you. All He wants is a relationship with you. But yet we push off and we give one word or we ignore. 24 hours later we'll get to it and then eventually it's a week later because we forgot 24 hours later and then, yeah. God deserves our best but yet we give Him our left. God loves us. God is love. We're told that. Jesus loved us. And matter of fact, the, the most, one of the most well-known verses in the Bible is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, gave His only Son. That whosoever believes in Him should not perish, will not perish. I just ask you this morning, do you love God? And it's not that cuddly blanket kind of love. I get it. You know, those things are pretty cool. I get it. But that's not love. It's not that moving love. It's not that, it, it, it's that desire to be with you and understand you. And He's offered you all He has. And many of you have accepted Christ 
as your Lord and Savior. But do you love me? There's a difference in loving and just knowing who he is. Yeah, I know Jesus. I have a knowledge of Jesus. But do you truly know him? It's simple this morning. Nothing long gone out. It's simple. God loves you. Do you love me? Are you giving me your first or your second? I just want to close with saying God loves you. Jesus loves you. He came, was willing to come to earth to be born in a man, laid in a man, with the cross in a man. Go one step further. In John, we're told no greater love as if a man lay down his life for another. And as I thought about that, yet Jesus laid down his life, his earthly life, and he died for us. But some of you here, the difference is going to be standing up. If I lay down my life, which means I stood up for what was right. I stood up for what God instructed me to do. That's laying down my life because you're going to be made fun of and you're going to take ridicule and you're going to take criticism which feels like you've been crucified. And it goes for us out here too. Do you stand up for Jesus? It's God's love all about Jesus. Would you join me? Father, we love you. And sometimes it's very difficult to figure out what that truly means. And what that truly looks like. Father, teach us to love you more than, than that cuddly blanket or the, than that dog. Or... Father, teach us. What love is all about. God, it's not a song. It's a matter of the heart. Thank you. For your son, Jesus. Lord, if there's somebody here who needs to make a decision this morning, I just pray that you be with them and give them the courage to step out. Father, there's also those who are looking for that place to call home. Let them know that we open our arms. symbol of love to me. Other than maybe that one that has already accepted Jesus but wants to let everybody know the joy that is in their heart. Jesus, thank you for loving us. We pray these things in your name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing Love Came Down at Christmas. Now, you should know it. If you don't pretend like you do and sing it loud, then everybody sounds like they know it. It's hymn number 109. If you've got a decision to make, I'll meet you down front. Let's stand and sing. Love is down here.
didn't ask for a wonderful job on that solo. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need an input so you can mark one note. I want y'all to smile, enjoy Christmas, know what love is all about, and share that love with somebody specifically this Christmas. Don't forget about tomorrow evening. There's nothing here this evening. Uh, so just be in uh, preparation for Christmas Eve, tomorrow evening at 5.30. Look forward to having you and your family. Donald, would you uh, close us? Let's pray. Uh, Father, again, we love you so much. We're grateful for this opportunity to, to come in your house and worship you and to celebrate uh, the gift that you gave us Christmas. God, thank you so much for uh, sending your son Jesus to us. Um, God, to save us, to bring us salvation, uh, to bring us joy and peace and love. And I pray, God, that we take those things and we share that in our community, God, that we, we love others because you love us so much. Jesus, we love you. It's in your name I pray. Amen.